Hi, my name is Andrew Bean. I'm one of the union's vice presidents. Today, I'm joined by two members, Vicki and Brittany. We're going to talk a little bit about how they've maintained their activism and helped build a stronger union during these tough times. So let's start with some introductions. Brittany, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Brittany Williams out of Seattle. I've been an IP for six years and, oh, five years now and an AP for six years. Vicki, how about you? I'm Vicki Bickford. I'm an individual provider, and I've been doing this for nine years. Thanks, Vicki. So let's start and talk about the massive cuts that DSHS is proposing to home care and nursing homes. Vicki, how would these cuts impact you and your client? Well, my client is a really nice old man. When I started working with him, he just had anxiety and needed someone to drive him around town to the grocery store. And it's progressed over the years to having had strokes and cancer. And now he needs constant care. And um, having to cut his hours would be catastrophic. It would be, it could be deadly for him. And for me, actually, it's a matter of keeping food on my table, roof over my head. It's, it's hard to believe that there's so many stories like yours that folks would consider cutting home care in the middle of a pandemic like this in these tough times. Um, what Can you tell us what the union is going to do about this? Well, I know the union is fighting. I know that um, they've been working with lawmakers to try and, and avoid this, to try and give us the protection, the clients, the protection that they need. I mean, we don't need more death. We don't need more people who are left in their homes without help and helpless. Can you talk a little bit about how you're um, fighting to for, for new revenue and against the unjust tax system? Oh, sure. Actually, I have met with lawmakers to talk to them, to ask some questions, and to also bring up the issue of the unfair tax system. Because right now, I, I don't know how many of us know, but billionaires aren't actually paying very much at all. 3%, I think I've heard, while we're paying a quarter, at least a quarter of our salaries. And we can't afford that. We really can't afford that. So I've been talking to the lawmakers and saying, we need you to reverse this upside down tax system. We need you to get us back the support so that people in need, people who don't have family for whatever reason, they're not left alone. That when they need help, they can get it. Thanks so much, Vicki. Brittany, this has also been an issue you've been super involved in, uh, how we're going to fight back against this unfair tax system. Can you talk about your work here? You know, it's it's ridiculous. Like Vicki said, that we pay 25% of our taxes. And you have billionaires like Jeff Bezos who can make $14 billion in one day and only pay 3%. And yet they want to cut us even more from our income. Thanks, Brittany. Um, and I know, I, I think we all know that the, the fights for economic justice and racial justice are so linked. Um, and this is, uh, and our union has really stood up for Black Lives Matter, has stood behind the movement for Black Lives. Brittany, this is very personal to you. I know you shared a story about your son the other day. Do you mind sharing that right now? Sure. Um, I don't mind. So there, next to my apartment, there's a little grocery store. And me and Danny have a habit when we get off the bus to he'll run a little far ahead of us. This day, my neighbor happened to be getting off the bus at the same time. And so we were me and her were talking and Danny ran off like he usually did. But across the street, a police officer stops literally where he's at and he's just watching him. Mind you, I'm in a conversation, but I'm always watching as a mother. And I'm like, OK. So when I make it to our apartment complex, what Danny likes to do is run to the other side where the post boxes, the mailboxes are, and hide and say, mommy, you can't find me. But this time it was different because by the time he made it to the, the mailboxes and was crashed down, the police officer had went up to the next light, hit a U-turn and made that left where my baby was at, y'all. And so, I'm starting to scream at the top of my lungs because what's playing in my head is all the visuals of babies being murdered by police for absolutely nothing. He takes off running and he comes to me. 
And the police officer who is literally right there at the mailboxes now, he hears me yelling for Danny, a seven-year-old baby, and he takes off. Now, as a mother of color, I'm thinking in my head, what is this seven-year-old baby doing that you needed to stop and and look at him and 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 follow him an innocent child don't you have something better to do as a police officer and this is my daily life now that i have to be more visual Brittany, i'm i'm so i'm so sorry that that happened you know i've got a daughter about the same age and i um i can't imagine what you're going through right then and it's not something that i would ever have to go through as a parent myself and you know it's not it's not right and that's why our union is standing up for black lives um can you uh can you tell us a little bit more about why it's so important for caregivers to be involved in this fight andrew it's important because as caregivers, it, it, you can look back and you see that most of us are women of color. Most of us are immigrants and most of us are black. And if we don't stand up, it's the same as saying we don't care. And if we don't stop this, you're literally wiping out a chunk of caregivers that all we're guilty of is being black having brown skin uh, Vicky um I know uh for for white folks like us it's so important for us to to be supportive can you talk about a little bit about how your journey on this and and how you've come to support the fight for black lives Sure. Um, as a white woman, I never was all that much a part of it. I've, I've had my son's best friends were black kids, and I didn't understand why they weren't willing to take a sandwich back at Subway because it had someone else's hair in it until I saw them go up and the instant um, look of disbelief by the cashier when they said, this is dirty and I need another sandwich. And, and it wasn't until recently that I recognized that that is a constant daily struggle for people of color. I had no idea. And I'm horrified. And I, I can't ever have my eyes closed about it again. I'll never forget it. So I've started getting more active um, because I've learned commitment thanks to the people at the union, honestly, in the past nine years. I've understood that if I have an opinion it's worth something and it's worth standing up for. And so I have gone down to Portland and even though I'm disabled, I've been in a car caravan. Um, just this past weekend, I met with some other folks up at a, a local Confederate shrine park and demonstrated there um, peacefully because that's all Black Lives Matter ever asked for. And that's, it, it's, a, it's a personal struggle for me. My daughter-in-law is black. I've grown up with aerospace engineers who are black, and yet they're still treated like they're criminals. And I can't let it stand. I can't. Thank you, Vicki. Um, Brittany, we're, we're standing with you. Um, it's, it's just not, we know it's not just what um, black folks have to go through in this country. Um, I wish, I wish we could be there with you right now. You know, it's harder to be over a camera and not be able to you know, put a hand on her shoulder and hand you a tissue, but um, just know that like, it's it's important for all of us to be in this fight and all of us to, to be there with you and all um, caregivers and all um, black folks around this country. And so I just wanna, you know, I wanna wrap us up and just thank both of you so much for participating in this panel today, for talking not just about what your own stories but showing that there are things we can do about it that we can stand up for economic justice that we can stand up for racial justice and that you know a global pandemic can't stop us from doing that that we're all able to ma maintain our activism that stand up for a strong union to even in a distance way and i know there's thousands of other caregivers in our union that are doing that we saw them in the video we saw folks standing up signing petitions 
going to socially distant rallies, you know, meeting with legislators uh, virtually. So there are so many opportunities to be involved and build a strong union. And I hope to see all of you uh, tomorrow in the workshops, um, learning how to be a, uh, more active. And we will follow up soon to make sure folks can get involved to support these issues that are so dear to us uh, in 2020. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the streets.